Alright, this video is going to be about the cross product as it relates to three things. The area of a parallelogram, the area of a triangle, and collinear points. And really it's all the same thing. Um, so, first thing we got to know is that the magnitude of the cross product is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the sine of theta. And we have to know that theta is the angle um, in between A and B. Um, so as long as we have that, uh, we'll be able to work through these. So first thing I'm going to do is kind of draw something for us. So we have that, and if I want to turn this into a parallelogram, what I do is uh, just use the vector b again, and then use the vector a again. And there you can kind of see your parallelogram. So the magnitude of b is actually the base of that parallelogram. And then uh, kind of, uh, I don't know, looks like a, a slant, maybe a hypotenuse type thing is going to come into play, is the magnitude of a or I guess just the length of the other side really is the easiest thing to think of it as. Um, so area of a parallelogram is the base times the height. So what we need to do is figure out what's going on. Um, so sketch in a height right there, an altitude. So that's going to be your height. And if you look at the right triangle that we just created, uh, we have that the height over the magnitude of A is equal to the sine of theta. All right, that's going to be important. Um, so the base is just the magnitude of B, and then the height is, if you look at that equation we just wrote, it's actually going to be the magnitude of A times the sine of theta. And uh, quick enough, if you look at that right there, that's actually what we wrote to begin with as the magnitude of the cross product. So the area is actually just the magnitude of the cross product of the two vectors determining the parallelogram. Uh, that's kind of a big deal. It's a, it's a nice result. Uh, it's not really a big deal, but it's a nice result. Um, and then what we can do is if you draw either diagonal of the parallelogram, you get a triangle and the area of that triangle is obviously just uh, half of the parallelogram. So the area of the parallelogram is the magnitude of the cross product. The area of the triangle is half of that. Uh, let's do an example. So say I have the vector A, which is 1, 3, 4, and the vector B, which is 4, 2, 1. So uh, I'm going to first find the area of the parallelogram. So there's a lot of calculations involved, but the, uh, the work's not actually that hard. So here's my parallelogram. I need to find A cross B. So I'm going to do that using the uh, determinant method. So I, J, K. And then I'm going to put the vector A as row 2, and the vector B as row 3. And I'm going to actually do expansion by minors. So it's I, and then this little 2 by 2 determinant. So you cross out the row and column that contains I. And then it's minus J and then the 2 by 2 determinant, so you cross out the row and the column that contains j, and then plus k, cross out the row and column that contain k, and it gives you 1, 3, 4, 2. Um, and then you have to remember how to do a 2 by 2 determinant, so it's i, and then the quantity, you do 3 times 1 and get 3, minus 2 times 4, which is 8, and then minus j, and parentheses, it's going to be 1 times 1, and then minus 4 times 4, and then plus k, and parentheses, it's going to be 1 times 2 minus 3 times 4, which is 12. Uh, so I can rewrite that. Negative 5i minus negative 15j minus 10k. And then I'm going to rewrite it in just component form. So negative 5, 15, negative 10. So now I need the magnitude of this. So that's the cross product. Um, and that's actually the hardest part of this is to find the cross product. Um, so now it's going to be the magnitude of that. So the area of a parallelogram is the magnitude of the cross product which is the magnitude of this vector that I just found. And that's going to be the square root of uh, x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Um, so we get that. I'm going to do a little, uh, little expanding here. Um, use a trick because I noticed that 5 uh, is a factor of 5, 15, and 10. So I'm actually just going to kind of rewrite this as 5 squared plus 5 squared times 3 squared plus 5 squared times 2 squared. And then that's 5 squared, I'm factoring out, 1 plus 3 squared plus 2 squared. Uh, these sorts of things happen all the time when you're uh, doing this type of thing. Uh, I, I don't know if the problems are specifically written that way, but you can almost always simplify uh, things. Don't, don't just expand. Uh, look, see if you can factor. If you can, go with it. Anyway, the area of this parallelogram is 5 root 14. And uh, so to find the area of any triangle, let's see if we can figure out the triangle. So there's our parallelogram. We found its area is the magnitude of the cross product. Um, so what I could do is just take those two vectors and then go across here. That creates a triangle, and that triangle would have an area that's half of the parallelogram. So I get this. 
Or I could have gone the other way and taken those vectors and created it there. And that's still half of the parallelogram, so the area is still just going to be half of 5 root 14. So 5 root 14 over 2. All right, so there's one more idea that I want to point out. Um, say we have three points, A, B, and C. I can create two vectors. So they share A as their initial point. This is important. Like, you have to have started with three points. You can't just have two vectors and not know anything about them and do this. But if you know that they share a common point, common initial, or common terminal, it doesn't really matter. Um, so I have that. If the magnitude of AB crossed with AC is equal to zero, then um, A, B, and C must actually be collinear. And uh, that just means that I've drawn my picture incorrectly here. But when you're drawing points in space, it's really hard to know how to draw them. Um, in this case, since I found the magnitude of the cross product, it was zero. That means that the area of the parallelogram is zero, which means that uh, there must not be a parallelogram. So you must have actually just gotten a, a line. Um, so really, the picture looks like this. So my vectors are this and this, and you can see that they, they just lie on top of each other. Um, an easier way to do this particular problem would be to find the vectors and then uh, just show that they're scalar multiples of each other. So as long as they're scalar multiples, um, they would be collinear. But um, anyway, that's three kind of related ideas, and uh, they're all about the cross product, and I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.